we're all awesome. Hi guys, this is uh, our, I guess, what is it? Is it our third one there, Sifu, I think? Yes, it is. It's our third uh, live podcast. My name is Sunny Pabuaya. I'm the one helping Sifu out with all this. And again, thank you very much for joining us. I mean, really appreciate you guys joining in because you guys are all wonderful. I, I'm overwhelmed because I thought we were only going to reach 100 and we have more than 100. So I had to say no to about 50 people. So I apologize. And it's a good thing because now it's teaching people that you got to be here first thing. Okay, guys, it's first come first serve. And again, I'm so excited for this interview because uh, I get to introduce my instructor, Sifu Aldacascas, and one of my favorite uh, uh, inspiration in a lot of things that I do, Mark Dacascos, because, you know, watching his movies growing up and all that, wow, especially that barrel twist that he does, and it seems like it goes on forever in Only the Strong, and it was like, oh my gosh, how did he do that, okay? But I know it's only going to get better. So again, make sure you guys have your uh, notepad because I'm sure they're going to give out some good nuggets and, and maybe teaching you a little bit about life and everything else. And then at the same time, if you do have any questions, what I want you to do is type it out on the chat line, okay? Otherwise, keep yourself muted because at the end of this, I will be picking a few of the questions in the chat line to ask Mark uh, whatever you ask, okay? You guys got that? So everybody, thumbs up. If you understand what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm recording it right now. And so I'm just seeing all the gallery and I've got all the thumbs up. All, if I don't go... If I don't get to see everybody giving me thumbs up, I'm shutting this off, guys. Thumbs up, thumbs up. There we go, there we go, there we go. And some people don't even have their camera on, but that's okay. They're giving that thumbs up, so that's beautiful. I love it. All right, guys, so now uh, we're ready to start this up. So again, the floor is all yours, Sifu and Mark. I'm gonna unpin myself so that this way they only see you two. All right, go right ahead, Sifu, the floor is yours. Okay, I hope all of you can hear me. Um, you know, it's really exciting time for me to, to have my son Mark on here uh, because I know that between he and I, we have a lot of things that we can share with you. And, you know, a lot of you guys have seen uh, Mark's movie with John Wick 3 and, and, you know, my topic is actually from zero to zero. And when I put the picture up of Mark when he was a toddler all the way up to now, you know, at his age, you know, it's going from zero to zero. And it's exciting because the thing is just that what happens from zero to zero, there's a lot of ones, ones, ones that happen along the way. And there's a lot of inspiration. There's a lot of good, the bad, and the ugly up and down that happens. But the thing that Mark, I, I, I've, I've seen is just that you know, and he knows this because every failure is, is always an opportunity to get into something. And, you know, um, if you've watched, um, uh, you know, uh, things, everything that looks good on the screen, you know, is good on the screen, but it takes hours and hours and so much dedication and self-discipline. And people get to where they are is because they have the determination, they have the motivation, they got the willpower, they've, they've got that uh, uh, self-control in themselves to move on. So, you know, topic is from zero to zero so many questions come in and it's pretty hard for me because it's like it's like you know oh um how does a dad ask the son well i can ask all kinds of questions but what do you ask what do you what what is from a third party what is from another person wanting to know well you know um you can tell us a lot of secrets about mark i can't do that you know mark has to do it by himself but all I can say is just that, and ask Mark, you know, uh, because a lot of you guys ask, you know, one of the big questions that come up, you know, is just that Mark grew up, you know, majority of the time in Europe. So he has that culture, the European culture and the American culture, and they fuse in and out. And we go and talk about all kinds of things. But hearing from Mark alone, Mark 
what is your opinion? I mean, how was your lifestyle was? Yeah, I mean, you know, we had a, we had a nice family, you know, you, me, Malia, and Craig, and, and, and the, the students there. What, what inspired you? You know, I know that you had no choice being in Germany, but what inspired you to, 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 to really stay on to the martial arts and keep you having that background of the European culture within you? Okay, hey, Pop, can you ask me that question um, again in just one moment? I just wanna say thank you for having me on your platform, uh, Pop and, and Sonny, thank you so much. Hi, Mom. Hello, Duru. Hello, Sifus, uh, friends and Simos and everybody. Sifu, Eric, I see, you know, it's weird because I see everybody's face. There's, wow, it's so cool. Lily, Lady L. Reed and Michael and Tito and Benjamin, hello. So, hello, everybody. Hey, Michael, is that Sifu Michael? Hello. Okay, so, so many friends. This is so, wow. See for Ramda and Cleve. This is so cool. So, David, muchas gracias, señor. <laughs> this is really cool. So, Pop and Sonny, uh, Holger Neumeyer, hello. Um, I just want to thank Pop and, and, and Sonny and everybody for being here. And, and Mom, are you, uh, are you watching me making sure that I uh, don't say anything out of, out of taste? You're going to make me <laughs> one stairs again. I know it. I know it. But anyway, so, so thank you everybody for being here. And I know we all have different time frames. Um, Duru, ich erzähle unsere Geschichte nicht über Duru nicht, das, das sage ich nicht, obwohl Sifu uns wahrscheinlich fragen wird. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Pop, can you ask, uh, ask that question again about inspiration and, and all that? Okay, what inspired you while in Germany to keep on? I know because we've had a lot of things going on there. You know, what kept you going? Okay, well, um, you and mom kept me going. So let's just, you know, if I go back a little bit. Um, now, my guess is most of you, maybe all of you, uh, found martial arts because you wanted to do it. You wanted to learn martial arts or practice or you saw something. Um, I always remember it being in my life because my parents did it, but... Uh, and I love Bruce Lee movies and, and Five Fingers of Death, I think was the first one I saw, but I don't know if I would have practiced myself. Uh, you know, going from Hawaii to Colorado, I was, you know, I, I, I loved martial arts, but I also liked playing in the water. I wanted to play football with my friends, ride our bikes. I don't think I would have chosen to go to martial arts tournaments at age six and seven, where to me, you know, the high school gyms always smelled like toe jam, dirty toes and sweat <laughs> and blood. And it, that was not like my idea of fun, but um, you know, mom and dad, and I'm, I'm grateful now, but they, uh, they had a Kung Fu school. And um, since we were at the Kung Fu school after schools, they made us train. And since we trained, I think mom and dad said, well, if we're going to tournaments anyway, you guys may as well fight and may as well train. And so it sort of was not a choice. So the inspiration was mom and dad saying, you're going to train and you're going to fight. So that was the initial inspiration was just not, you know, not wanting to get in trouble with them. Um, once, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to jump around because our life is sort of complicated and we've traveled a lot. Once we got to Germany, I think I was 12 or 13, and there were moments when I actually enjoyed training. I was like, wow, this is interesting. It's really hard, very painful. If any of you have worked out with my mother, mom, Duru, you know, uh, she's really tough. I mean, if you guys ever saw Officer and Her Gentleman, I think mom was the Lou Gossett Jr. part, the drill sergeant. And dad was like the general sitting at his office saying, you know, saying what he wanted. And mom was the one that made us do it. <laughs> and, um, you know, real quick, what I love about what I got from mom's philosophy is, yeah, everybody wants to fight. 
but you guys have to be fit to fight. You have to be fit first. So she trained our butts off in terms of conditioning and flexibility and strength, which I'll talk about later. But jumping back to inspiration now, so we're in Germany and there were moments when I actually had fun. And then when my, and, and I'm, I'm giving you little pieces because our story is like this huge puzzle. So I'll give you some pieces and then we can maybe try to put it together. Uh, there was one point in Germany when we, when we got there where dad had his school and um, mom at that point in history um, was not really, I guess, in terms of business, allowed to teach at dad's school. Dad wanted her to, but the people he was associated with just wanted men to teach, not women. And mom being mom said, I'm projecting in her mind, F that, you know, Albert brought me to Germany. He said I could teach. Now I can't teach. I'm going to open my own school. So <laughs> mom and, and mom, maybe mom can talk about this later. I don't know how, but she, she looks through Germany and decides I'm going to have my own martial arts school in Hamburg's red light district. That's a mom question. You ask mom about that. <laughs> so <laughs> my mom, a woman, opens a martial arts school in the red light district of Hamburg, right? The second largest red light district in Europe. The Beatles played there, trivia. Uh, that's where they got their chops. And one of, her, one of her first students there, and then you can ask him about this, was Sifu Emmanuel. Why was Sifu Emmanuel hanging out in the red light district? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, he, <laughs> he joins mom's martial arts school. And so when I, I was training in both schools, mom, I, I was training at dad's school. And then when mom opened her school, I wanted to go train with mom too. So I go to mom's school. And one of the first days I meet Emmanuel. And it was very funny. I'm going to tell this little story. Emmanuel, uh, like me, uh, was not the most flexible person in the world. I mean, when I first met him, and I'll tell you, the first day, his middle splits was basically like this. Yeah, that high, right? <laughs> so both guys, you know, we're, we're training martial arts and we, um, we had no flexibility. And then we're both from the islands. Uh, Dudu is from uh, Cape Verde. I was born in Hawaii. And now we're in Germany, speaking German to each other. Uh, kind of an odd couple, you know, Hawaiian guy, African guy speaking German in Hamburg, in the red light district, in a woman's school. So we're sparring. And we were laughing half the time and we became really close friends. So the combination of starting to actually enjoy training, not tournaments so much, but just training, and then having a great new friend um, who was dealing with similar a situation of being a foreigner, being an immigrant in this country, and, and then, um, um, you know, he finding a, um, you know, a really great teacher in my mom and myself training with my mom and then dad coming over and training, uh, teaching with mom at her school. The inspiration was friendship and self-esteem. And then, you know, just in the body, you find you know, after, after so many years of training, the body becomes more supple. And with mom's, you know, uh, drill sergeant work. antics, uh, getting conditioned. And, you know, with dad's way of philosophizing and teaching street fighting, actually in street clothes, out in the parking lot or on the street, all these things, it wasn't just one thing that gave me inspiration. It was so many different elements and it didn't feel forced. You know, when, when I first started training, it was certainly forced. Mom, dad saying, Marco, you and Craig are gonna fight. And then after years, it became so organic and fun. And I gotta tell you that for me, and I think you can ask, I'll explain why I call Sifu Emmanuel Dudu in a little while, but <laughs> um, why Dudu and I, um, 
we used to just train even on the weekends when, when there weren't any tournaments and it was just fun. And so I guess the inspiration uh, pop, a lot of it was fun. It well, was you, fun. Had a good you had a good training partner. You know, it's yes. essential that although, you know, you have two teachers that, that, that uh, sort of like cracking the whip, but having someone to work with, you know, in the same, with the same mindset and mentality does help because both of you inspired each other and both of you being, like you said, being, being, by, being uh, immigrants, if you would say, in a foreign country learning together, you, you, be, you bonded. And because of the bondage, you bonded spiritually, emotionally, physically, and, and you did this. And that was good. So, you know, for anybody that's getting into any kind of martial arts training, you know, you really need to, you really need to have good mentors. And if you've got somebody like uh, uh, Malia, uh, cracking the whip on you, there's no doubt you're going to get into a condition, you know, and, but you do have to have, you do have to have a good training partner. It's, you can train by yourself, but then, you know, it takes a lot of self-discipline. Um, Mark, you know, you and I was talking a little bit because I've always had a different opinion on why the word doodle and how you folks call each other doodle. So, so know? Pop, maybe, maybe you explain what you thought and then I can, you know, explain the actual... All right. Okay, okay. Some of you guys sometimes, you know, will hear Mark refer to to uh, Emmanuel, you know, as Dudu. But you know, it, it happened. I heard it. <laughs> I had it. I heard it back in Germany after Mark and and um, uh, uh, Emmanuel took a vacation back to Hawaii, um, and they would be calling each other Dudu. And they also had a little group of people. I don't know, maybe five to ten of them. And it was, a, it was like, you know, you're talking about teenagers, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old. And, you know, they used to have, um, you know, bomber jackets and, and the kind of thing. And they looked like a little gang on, 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 on the Raper Bond, you know. And, and they, were, they would call each other doo So, you know, for me, in my mind, you know, it's just that the reason when they say, hey, how are you doing, doo To me, it's like, how are you doing? Bap, 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 bap. You know what I'm talking about? And I always thought because Mark them used to have a game where they would put a pile of, uh, you, you know this Mark, but you guys, you guys did it. When you put a, 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 the dog poop in the package, a uh, 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 paper bag, and little, put it in front of, a, I don't know, a door and lit it on fire so that the person would come out and step on it. I remember that the neighbor next door, you know, to the school. And this is why, and it was an, it was an initiation. You guys were bad boys, Sam, you know? So you guys was the you you were called the doodos. You see what I mean? Because you call each other half a doodoo, -doo, full doodoo, -doo, and doodoo -doo, doodoo. -doo. So I thought it meant like the the you know the SI club, right? Explain on what how the doodos became to be. Well, the doodos came to be because we were in Hawaii, and there's a place called Hanauma Bay or Hanauma Bay, and uh, it's a great place for snorkeling. If you go around, um, <clears throat> if you go around the the uh, the the, uh, the, the harbor, uh, not the harbor, the uh, the inlet, the bend, <laughs> yeah, the bend. Uh, there's there's a bunch of lava rock, and in the lava there are these natural holes that go under the lava and then feed out into the water, maybe 50 or 100 yards, not, not 50, uh, 25 to 50 yards out. And one of these holes was rather big and maybe eight to 10 feet deep. And when the, when the tide comes in, the water filled up like a toilet bowl. And then when the tide goes out, it flushes like a toilet bowl. And Emmanuel and I, um, we, were, we were trying to get very tan, right? Because we're both local guys and we go from Germany to, to Hawaii so we can get tan. And we were about the same, the same shade. I thought I was a little darker Emmanuel thought he was a little darker. So, you know, it was, it was a competition. So we're in the toilet bowl, you know, being up and flushed out. And I said to Emmanuel, I said, you are so dark. You look like a piece of doo-doo. <laughs> he starts laughing. He says, you look like a piece of doo-doo. And so we laughed. The next day, we kept on calling each other that. And by the time we got back to Germany, it just became our nickname. 
And since in Germany, Dudu is not really, you know, Kaka, it's just Du is the informal way of saying you, right? So people just thought we were just saying you, you, you know, as, you know, a, a term of endearment, when in fact, we were calling each other poop. And so when people said, hey, uh, how do we get the nickname Dudu? We laughed because do you really want that? And they wanted to be a part of the, you know, I guess this little click we had. And so we made up these ridiculous things like, um, uh, for example, we had uh, the guys that wanted to be a quarter dude or half dude. We challenged them to go into uh, mom's class or dad's class and do these ridiculous movements, you know, uh, just to interrupt dad's class uh, or mom's class or, you know, or pick up certain pieces of stuff from the street and then bring it inside and flush it in the toilet in front of the parents, you know? So it was just a silly little teenage thing. And um, uh, somehow after all these years, I mean, I'm 57 now and Dudu's, Dudu's much younger than me, but uh, <laughs> we still call each other Dudu. So, you know, uh, that, that Kung Fu bond and toilet bowl in Hawaii, it still is in our hearts, I guess. Yeah, you know, that's inspirational because you can use the word doo-doo to mean many di different things. You know, like you said, in Germany, it means you, you. But sometimes when I hear the word doo-doo, you know, I, I look at you folks of doing, you do things and you do it right. So you do-do, you do it and you do it. We'll go with that. We'll go with that, Pop. Philosophically, okay? That, that, <laughs> that works good with me. Yeah. Um, you know, Mark, uh, questions asked, you know, um, you know, as far as your martial arts training, yeah, and your acting, how, first of all, how did you actually get into acting? Okay, so uh, this is the other thing. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I probably would not have found martial arts without mom and dad. And uh, I can say I probably, I don't know, I probably would not have found acting without uh, a man named Chris Lee and again, mom, because it was never my idea. I don't think, uh, I don't think Emmanuel and I ever said to each other, we want to be actors. I don't remember saying that. It wasn't even a deal. Um, and so, 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 so getting into show business was, was not something that I had planned. I, I actually moved from Germany to Taiwan when I was 17 to be a Buddhist monk. Uh, <laughs> Dudu, Dudu and I had seen Jet Li in the movie Shaolin Temple. And we both thought it was amazing. And I thought to myself, oh, that's me. You know, um, he does martial arts. He's spiritual. You can go off in the villages and help people. I had this very idealized, romanticized idea of how my life would be. I did not want material things. Um, I did not want a family. Uh, I wanted to go do martial arts and help people. Cut to um, after Taiwan, going back to Germany at uh, almost 19. I was 18, eight, you know, almost 19 years old. Cut to I'm in San Francisco, Chinatown, teaching um, at mom's school. She had, she had another school in, in San Francisco. And I'm trying to figure out what to do with my life because another story, but the monkhood thing didn't quite work out. Um, Why? Well, uh, I like girls. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm teaching uh, uh, mom's, uh, some of mom's classes in San Francisco and um, I'm on lunch break. And on my way to lunch, these two people, these two guys stopped me and they, they asked me, um, excuse me, are you an actor? And I said, I am not. And they said, oh, well, would you like to audition for a movie? And I said, no, thank you. And they said, why not? And I said, I'm not an actor. And they said, well, um, we think you could be right for this role. You wanna at least give it a try? I said, no, thank you. They said, at least take our number and think about it. I said, okay, thank you very much. I took the number, went off to lunch, forgot about it. Um, came back uh, came back to the school about to teach class. And I said, I just said offhandedly, hey mom, 
these guys asked me to, uh, to audition and I said, I, I wasn't interested. And she said, why not? And I said, because I'm not an actor. And she said, yeah, but you're not a monk either. That didn't work out. Life is a big roller coaster. Go try it. And I went, uh, uh, okay. So I called the number. We set up an audition. I went in there and I remember, uh, you know, just not knowing anything. I'd never taken a drama class. Um, I'd never thought about being an actor until mom said, why not go try it. Um, and so everything they said, they said, can you improv this? And I said, what's, what's, what's improv? And they said, just make things up. And I went, okay. So they gave me some lines and then, and then I tried to riff off of that and improvise. And I'm sure I did terribly, but I was focused and did my best. Um, and that was that. And, uh, went home and I think uh, I told mom I was horrible and then didn't think about it anymore. Three days later, uh, we get a call. I got the role. Okay, now what? Uh, first day on set and I see this beautiful Chinese girl sitting on the car, all these cameras set up. I'd never seen cameras before, never been on a movie set. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm 18, almost 19. Director gives me some notes, gives me the dialogue, you know, um, I'd rehearsed a little bit, and we did the scene. And um, the crazy thing was that scene was with uh, the incredible Joan Chen. Um, she was the lead actress in um, The Last Emperor. She did Twin Peaks, you know, she's done a lot of things. So that was my first scene ever was with Joan Chen. And that director was Wayne Wang, who went on to direct the Joy Luck Club. So these were, you know, they became very successful people. Anyway, I, I had that experience and I thought, this is interesting because if we tell the story well as actors, if you, if you, if you tell the story, you can touch people's hearts, you can inspire, you can educate, you can entertain. And I thought that's a, that's a really wonderful thing to share. And so um, that was pretty much my entrance into acting. No classes, movie, and um, I went from there. Now, disclaimer, um, whether it was because I was terrible or because the, the director actually changed the story, Jones scenes my scenes, a lot of the other scenes were cut out of the movie. So we were never in the actual film, only in the, um, the outtake reel. But that started my first steps. And um, yeah, I am forever grateful to Chris Lee for inviting me and for mom for saying, go do it. Because if she wouldn't have said, go do it, I wouldn't have called. And um, maybe we wouldn't all be here. So thank you again, mom. Well, everybody lead, uh, needs a little bit of push, and I got you. Well, I mom you doesn't that. push, Pop. She shoves. <laughs> that, that was a real good shove. <laughs> uh, that was a real good shove. But I'm sure the scene with uh, Joan Chan was also exciting. <laughs> um, it was a makeout scene. So that was my entrance into acting. Of course I liked acting. Wow. <laughs> they pay me for this? <laughs> well, okay. But, but, but and, Pop, I got to tell you, though, after that movie, it took me 10, 10 solid years from that point, 10 solid years of auditioning, acting classes, voice classes, improv improvisational classes, and a lot of smaller roles to get to only the strong. It took 10 years, 10 years of focus to get to the point where I could get a lead role. You know? mm, great. I know a lot of people you know, just because they go to Hollywood, think that they're going to be discovered and overnight they're going to become a star. They don't realize that it takes a lot of preparation and a lot of luck also. And you were prepared, you know, physically and, uh, uh, you know, as, as far as the martial arts, but, you know, unprepared for the part of acting. And, I, and you did that by getting education and in, it, just preparing yourself, you know, because I know that when we used to talk uh, about that in there. You told me about how many times that you went to auditions and you know, it's like a, a cattle call. And we all know that, you know, a lot of people don't realize that in there just because um, you get a trophy in a tournament, you know, 
uh, they don't realize that it took you many, many hours and sweat and tears to get there. It's the same thing when you get into audition because you never know. Now, I know that you've had some of great teachers. Who are, who was some of your great teachers that you've had? Okay. Uh, I, as far, you know, as acting, because I know that you, you, I know that you're into Shakespeare. Right. Okay. Well, well Pop, you know, the thing is, um, you asked a lot of good questions. Um, <clears throat> In terms of, of, of auditioning and acting, you know, I don't know what the current statistics are, but uh, a few years ago when I checked before, it was, you know, we have a, we have a, a guild, a union for actors called the Screen Actors Guild. And of that union, I, um, last I checked, only 5%, only 5% of all the actors in our union could live off of only acting, only 5%. And only the upper, you know, the upper percent of the 1% are the Tom Cruises and Keanu Reeves. So to get a job is extremely difficult. And, you know, um, Dudu will attest to that because, you know, on my 10 years, of trying to get only the strong on that direction of only the strong, Dudu sent me so much money to pay my rent, help me pay for acting classes. You know, it's really, really hard. And even now, after all of these years, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still practicing and studying and taking classes and auditioning. It's never ending. Um, you know, I think the great, the great thing about, whoops, something just clicked off. I can't, oh, there we go. Everything clicked off. Can, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah we can. Okay, you. Thank you. I okay. apologize, that was me. Okay. I, something uh, technical. Okay. Alrighty, no worries. Um, but the thing is, you know, all of the training that we do in martial arts to get to a certain level you know, some of it, some of it transfers over to acting in terms of being present and being in your body. But um, if you learn a form, that would be, I would equate that, you know, that's the, that's like physical dialogue. A form would then be, I would equate it to a monologue, a verbal dialogue. So when you do the form, you know, and there's, let's say there's 150 moves that's like doing a Shakespeare speech with 42 lines. And you have to practice just like we practice a single kick or a single punch. Um, as an actor, we have to practice how to say that one word, say that line, say that paragraph. How do you feel, how do you say it and feel it from not Mark, but from the character? So there is tons of training that needs to go in. And the great thing is, this is the great thing, is martial arts is a huge tool um, for that because again, it makes you present. And you know, as martial artists, we know how to focus and work hard. But <clears throat> I take a, a Shakespeare, um, my Shakespeare teacher, Patsy Rodenberg, let me see, I have her. Ah, I'll show you. Hi, this way. <laughs> okay, so for example, Patsy Ronenberg, okay? Um, she's from London. She was uh, 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 one of the heads, uh, one of the uh, head voice teachers at Guildhall. She's worked with the National Theater, Royal Shakespeare Company, Johnny Depp, Joseph Fiennes, uh, Ian McKellen, all her students. I've been working with her for maybe 16, 16 years, 18 years. And it's just like martial arts. If you don't use it, you lose it. As an actor, you have to be connected to your words. You have to mean what you say, say what you mean when you say it. You know, imagine, imagine having a monologue and saying to be or not to, that's like doing five or six moves of a form and then freezing because you forget it. It has to be so in your body that it comes out physically, you know, through your eyes, through your voice, through your feelings. So 
Uh, I still train. Uh, I, take, I take my classes as much as I can when I'm not on a project. And when it comes to auditioning, oh my goodness. Mom, dad, Duru, you guys all know. Um, I don't know what the average statistic is, but you know, I've gone 15 auditions, 20 auditions with no job. It's really rough. And you have to, I think, like in martial arts, one has to grow deep roots, like strong legs, you know, mabu horse stance. You have to really find yourself and, and uh, you know, same thing, keep your soft heart, but thick skin. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes we're just not right for the role, or maybe, maybe we're not capable of taking on that role at the time. Just like, you know, in most cases, a yellow belt shouldn't be competing against black belts. You know, there are lots of different levels. Before this Zoom started, I did a two hour table read, Zoom read for this new movie um, um, we're, we're preparing to do starting in, in a couple of weeks. And I was so nervous and excited because we have such a great cast and the script is wonderful. It's like having a, you know, having a form with fantastic moves and you're so excited to do it. So, um, you know, I just thought all of the training that I've done in martial arts with acting, all that comes into play because, you know, as an actor, we, we are the vessel for the energy and the experience. And then you, uh, you know, you filter that through your character's eyes. So what I love about martial arts and acting, to me, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of, it works together. It works together because, because it's energy and it takes a lot of discipline and perseverance. And if you wanna, if you wanna be good, as in anything, you can't stop training. You can't stop training. It doesn't stop. Absolutely correct. When you talk about that in there, I mean, people that are successful constantly keep on training and educating itself. This is why we say continuous education. It doesn't matter. You're learning knowledge is what it is. And even if you are a, a, a yellow belt, you can't think, you cannot think as a yellow belt. You have to put your, your, your mind into a mindset. And you've done that, Mark. Uh, I always tell a lot of the students, no, just because you are a yellow belt, don't think that you are a yellow belt. What you are is a black belt in training. So for as an actor, you know, at the beginning, you know, you want to be up there and you know you're a beginning. What it is that if you keep your mind in a, a beginning stage, you're not going to progress too much or, or fast. But if you look like the, you know, like the upper top one uh, percent is say I am a black trainer, or I say I am a training uh, actor for that goal, then at least you're gonna get there. You you understand what I'm talking about because you're shooting high. Um, you know, Mark, there's there's uh, uh, so many things, and I I think Sonny, you got some uh, some questions that are people uh, people want to ask, and I I see a lot of them that are, are coming on and asking questions. And, you know, like you already mentioned how important the martial arts is, you know, <clears throat> it, it, it's, it, it encompasses a lot of things and a lot of people kind of mistake the word martial arts um, uh, for being just total self-defense or self-protection. It is not, it's encompassed a lot of things, you know, because martial arts can go into the healing arts, can go, can go into medicine um, uh, such as acupuncture, and all of that, because um, you know, as far I know, you guys all know this. I always say that martial arts to me is like medical insurance, something that you want to have and hope that you never have to use. But in the same to token, to I'm using martial arts to progress myself, and all of you that are in the martial arts are using the martial arts as a stepping stone to educate yourself, because martial arts is life. You need it from the very day that you're born. You know, you're born with your fist closed, which means you're a fighter. That means you're going to fight. The only time that you, your hands are open is when you let go of life. And we are always trying to grab on to life. This is, this is the, the, uh, your mindset of philosophy. And I know that Mark getting into to the acting fear of a part. And I'm sure that Mark, you are, you're also taught this one here. 
is just that um, you 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 learn you learn things by overcoming fear, and I'm sure that in your acting class you overcome you overcome fear. You know, um, uh, like my you like my 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 daughter, uh, you know, uh, Vanessa and Layla. You know, I mean. Uh, they into the field and they have to learn how to overcome the fear also. But anyway, Layla and 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 uh, Vanessa, I know you guys are waving in with there. These are younger ones. But Mark, how do you overcome that the fear? Well, <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to tell the story. <laughs> okay, better grab some coffees. Two hours later. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I think there are a lot of ways, but um, it all comes down to doing. The more you do, the less fear you have. The better prepared mm -hmm. you are, the less fear you have. But still, the, um, you know, the emotions jump up and it goes in martial arts and in, um, in acting. Uh, there was, uh, so back in Germany, I think I was 16 or 17 and mom and dad had our senior fight team. And at some point, I can't remember when, um, dad announced in front of the class, uh, whatever class we were in at that time, that uh, he had two new members of the senior team. And that would be uh, Dudu Emmanuel and me. And Dudu I think was what, 18 or 19 and I was 16 or 17. And um, I thought that was really cool and really terrible because now we would be fighting, you know, we'd be representing mom and dad, but we'd also be fighting grown men with no weight class, no height limit. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I think that's great for Dudu. He's 6'2". I'm a little guy. I'm like, oh gosh. Anyway, um, I was grateful though, because mom trained us really hard and we had conditioning. And for me, it was about just running away until I could score and then run away again. And she had me well conditioned. <laughs> but um, we, we, we were fighting against we had this, this big tournament and we were fighting against the Berliners. And they were, uh, I think something like the fourth ranked um, karate team in Europe. And we all thought that was really cool, but again, really scary. And I'll just cut to the point where um, we're in, in the mid, mid competition and you know it's five guys against five guys. And at one point, um, two of our guys had fought and dad and mom were looking at us. And at some point dad starts smiling and he looks at the guy that the, the, the Berliners have sent down and he's, they were all huge. And he looks at me and he starts smiling. Like he's really happy to, to do something. And he says to me, Marco, he's yours. And I'm like, <laughs> in my mind, I'm trying to smile, but I'm going, why? Why am I happy about this? I don't even want to be here. You know? So I breathed and Dudu and I, we slapped each other's hands and we're like, you know, we said our little curse words because it made us macho and feel better. And I walked out there and you guys know the martial arts tournaments, the, uh, the center referee, you know, we, we saluted, he says fight. And all I remember is pop, I get smacked in the face. I'm sliding across the floor and my nose hurts. And I get up and of course he gets the point and I'm bloody, I'm bloody, like dropping like this. So the referee stops the fight and says, I can wipe my face before I come back out. And I walk back to the side, mom comes up with a towel or t-shirt or something and she wipes my face. And mom, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but for me, it was kind of like this. She's wiping my face and I'm, I'm shaking. Not so much that it hurt. I was used to some physical pain, but I was scared. I was scared. And I thought, this is stupid. I don't want to be here. I don't want to fight on the senior team. And I certainly don't want to go back in there. And I said something like, um, mom, I'm really, <laughs> she slapped me. She slapped me. I'm about to cry. I've got a bloody nose and my mom slaps me. And she says to me, holding my face. So nobody could hear, she goes, you get out there and you do what you're trained to do. You are the Costco's. I stopped crying. I was so mad at mom. I walked out there and did my deal. <laughs> so 
<laughs> our team, I think, cut to the end. Our team um, won by one or two points. And I remember that that was, I mean, for me, it felt like my rites of passage. You know, my dad trusted that I could handle myself and mom knew what to do for me. I wouldn't recommend everybody slapping the kid when they got a bloody nose, but, <laughs> but mom knew me and dad knew me and they did what it took to get me to do that. You know, so um, that's one way <laughs> of finding your courage. You know, sometimes you have a little help. If you have people that know you, that's one way. But another way, you know, maybe a more stable way is just being really prepared and then by practicing and doing it. A lot of times, you know, when you get on a show on an acting job, it's kind of the same thing. Is that, you know, John Wick, for example. Um, maybe, maybe you guys don't know this, but I was cast last minute, last minute. I get a, I get a text from Chad Stahelski, the director for, uh, for John Wick 3 on a Sunday. And he says, hey, Dacascas, how you doing, man? Um, Text, uh, he says, call me tomorrow morning, Monday. I said, okay, Chad, I'll, I'll call you tomorrow morning. I called Chad Monday morning. He says, uh, we got a problem over here and hopefully you can help. I said, I hope so. He says, listen, um, things have changed for our cast. I would, like you to in, uh, I would like to invite you to John Wick 3 and to play the lead villain. And my heart skipped a beat. And I said, yes, please. Yes, I'm honored. Yes, please. Thank you so much. He goes, read the script first. I said, Chad, no need. I will do it. He says, Dacascos, read the script first. I said, yes, sir. He sends the script. I read it. It's great. I call him back. I said, sir, I'd love to do this. Um, when would you like me there? He says, can you come tonight? I said, yes, sir. So now I'm like, what the heck? So I get on a plane Monday night. I arrive uh, in New York, Tuesday morning, they drive me straight to set. And on set, of course, is Keanu Reeves, Angelica Houston, Chad Stahelski, and I'm starting to do this. No preparation, no preparation, right? Um, Wednesday, uh, I get wardrobe, I do my, my physical and all that kind of stuff. Thursday, we start filming. My first scene, with Lawrence Fishburne, Asia Kate Dillon, my heart, boom, boom, boom. Breathe, breathe. You know, in acting and martial arts, you gotta breathe. Not the big upper, upper chest breaths. You gotta make sure the breath goes down into your belly, big belly breaths, like a ki That's why we ki right? You get it out. So I'm breathing. Then just like in Mabu in horse stance, Feel your feet on the ground. You feel grounded. I'm breathing. I feel grounded. Now I got a chance to play. <laughs> and, and what? And I played. <laughs> I, I still get nervous just thinking about that. <sighs> John Wick three and the Berliners. Uh. <laughs> that's that's the good old days. Mark, um, how would you inspire young people? Is that it? <laughs> well, yeah, I can't go into money. How would <laughs> how would you inspire young people into say that um, you know we already talk about the. Uh, 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 the martial arts, mar martial arts and acting, but you know, how, how, how would you inspire them? Uh, because there's so many things that's uh, really distracting to people. You know, they got these home games, they, you know, and uh, things this way, how would you inspire them to really stick onto something and, 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 and focus um, uh, if they are shooting into acting or into becoming a computer wizard? What is the formula you use? I know it's a tough question. I think 
because I, I struggle with that every day, Pop. I think it is to find purpose. Uh -huh. To find purpose. Uh, and usually if you can find that purpose, your heart is in it. You're passionate about it. You have fun. And although it's difficult to get good at anything, it takes, you know, a lot of time and effort. Hence, you know, um, we've all heard, you know, the, the saying that is that it takes 10,000 hours to get good at something. Um, I agree. I agree with that. And then if you want to get better than just good, it takes more hours, you know, yeah. but I think to find to find purpose is is very helpful, if not essential, because if if I think for me, if I just think, you know, what do I want to do? It's not good enough. Um, I, 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 I feel best. I guess when I'm sharing with others, when I, when I do something that I think is, is helpful for other people, because I bore myself and I need to be around other people or else, I mean, me, me is boring. We is cool. Mm. You know, what I hear from the, in, in your words of a purpose, you, you become successful because of the right circle of influence, the people you're around with. And when you focus on things, it's not just the focus because anybody can focus yeah, on, on things, but what finds it, what I find uh, that really gets you there is that, that you have a passion for it. The passion to really succeed, whether it's gonna be because you're trying to uh, get, educate yourself or you, you really love doing, it's really going above that for you. Passion has always been good because it can go for, it can be for, go for the good or the bad. And your passion to be the very best ha, is, is still going on. Now, from 17 to, uh, uh, from 17 to 57, um, you, you're talking, you're talking uh, more than 40 years of, of really just focusing to become who you are. And, and again, nobody would be going that far because it's too long to get into be, being successful. And for, for me, I see you say, well, you know, my, you know, my son is successful, but in your own mind, you're not there. You want to go more and better. And that, it, that's because your passion to provide. But there's other keys that make you go for passion. It's just that your own inner self, you know, the love for your wife, your family, your children, what you can give for society. Uh, I hope I'm on the right path on that because this is where I can see you actually uh, say moving. So if I am wrong, correct me, but if I am right, how could you add on to that? Well, um, I feel like you are absolutely right, Pop. And, you know, a lot of it, nature and nurture. You know, I have to say that martial arts, you and mom um, were, are my roots. You know, for... For good or for bad, I remember, mom, if, if I'm going in a direction that you don't want me to, you just go like this or, and I'll stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I remember, um, I remember talking with mom about uh, tournaments or taking second place or something. And just to put this in context, everybody, Mom, you, you guys know this, but mom was a champion in fighter and in forms. So for her, there is only first place. Maybe she's changed her mind about that. But at that time, you know, she trained us really hard. And she said, rightly so, she said, if you take second place, you're still a loser. And I'm like, well, that is so mom. <laughs> and, uh, and there's a lot of ways to debate that, but she only became... I think that champion, because for her, that was her truth. And so that made a lot of sense to me. Um, I don't think I have that mentality of my mom and dad in terms of wanting to be a, a champion. I just loved training. But yes, in terms of being the best, 
um, that is the best mark that I can be, to be the best mark I can be because I was humbled very, very early in life because I trained with these great martial artists. Sifu Yuan Tigye, I see you. Open. You know, Sifu Yuan, long leg, sidekick. I'm not gonna be better than that. Sifu Dasos, I see you. We were sparring one time and I threw a hook kick. What did he do? He just dropped down and swept me. Whew, boom, I landed on my butt. Okay, I'm not gonna be better than that. Duru, Emmanuel, 6'2", strong, muscular. There's no way. And then I had my dad whose hands were like brrrr, and mom who was super strong and flexible and you know conditioning. And I'm thinking, I'm the worst out of everybody. So I'm not gonna be better, but, but I can be the best mark. And when I realized when people are better than you, don't get jealous, get inspired. And it was crazy because when that came to mind, I'm like, wow, everybody's better than me. Yes, yes. And that has helped me my, my whole life because in martial arts, and Sifu Eric, hello. I remember one time we were staying at Sifu Eric's house and he came back from a run and he had a shirt off. And the first thing I thought was, he kind of looks like a gorilla <laughs> because he was so muscular and he had these square pecs and I'm like, wow, you know? So um, Sifu Ron, <laughs> cracking that whip. I mean, so many people, you know, are great at what they do. So for me, it was like using the people, not using, um, letting the people that are better, and there are a lot of them, inspire one, inspire you. And that way you don't feel bad about yourself. You feel uplifted, you know, because the other way, I guess the other way, and of course that comes in sometime because we're all human, is if you get jealous, that's like somebody pushing you down and you're fighting this way, right? Being inspired is kind of like people going, hey man, come up, come up, you know? And so with martial arts, I've used that I mean, look, mom and dad had Bill Wallace and Howard Jackson and Benny Akitis at the house. I mean, these are greats. You let them inspire you. And when I get on set, when I got on set with Keanu Reeves and Angelica Houston and Lawrence Fishburne, I'm like, okay, these guys are huge, major A-listers, but I'm here, something worked and let their greatness and experience rub off on me open my heart. Don't go, oh, oh, I'm, you know, be insecure and, and get that all, all, get me all flustered. Let my heart open and go, you guys are great. I want to learn. Let's play. That's great. Mark, everything, you know, that you saw or uh, uh, spoke about, you know, for a lot of people, because of you, of who we are and who you are, they kind of think it's, wow, that's impossible you know, to get there. But let me just show you something. I don't know if you can see this word, impossible. But if you go down, it's made, I am possible. I like that. That means yeah. from impossible to I'm possible. So if you think that everything is impossible, it is not. Just separate the I and the M and you see it, I am possible. That means you're able to do anything. And we talk about something that I just want to bring up is because that we were talking about that. Um, um, I'm just going to write it down in, in other words here. It's just that the circle of influence that you have, yeah, wasn't just because of you, me alone, me alone. No, no, no. What happened is because you had people around you that it became we turn the M to W and it's we. Mm -hmm. So in other words, your circle of influence was with the circle of we around you instead of just you alone. And you've had a lot of good circle of people around you. You know, you got mom, you got me, you got Dudu, you've got Dasus, you've got all the people in Germany, you've got your acting people, you know. These are the circle of influence that has helped you to project on who you are. But the closest self that you have 
is your family, your wife, your biggest supporter, you know, and your children, you know, and of course my my grandson Makoa, who is I'm trying to go surfing with, and he's he's more more out there doing something else. But Mark, you know, I'm gonna let Sonny throw some questions at you, Sonny, because he's got some. All right, thank you, Sifu. Uh, so far, I mean, it's it's great. I love all the questions as well as the answers, and I know that it's actually inspiring a lot of people. Um, I've got one question right now from Chris Jones from England. Um, his question, hey, Chris. Yes, he actually says hello and thank you for. Uh, doing uh, a recording for his podcast too as well hey. so he says now you okay it clicked there you go perfect all right so his question was with you being such a happy positive outgoing person you know uh was it hard to get into character as wolf at in you know hawaii Pai Bo? because it's completely opposite of who you are Ah, okay. Thank you for the Chris question, Chris. Good seeing you again, man. So this is the thing. Um, I'm happy now because like I said, I, I, I like, you know, I like being with good people. But, you know, mom, dad, certainly Julie, my wife, my kids, my brother Craig, you know, Uncle Dudu. I, I think I am not naturally happy guy. Julie wakes up in the morning and she's like, ha ha, you know, what can I do for you? And she's so sweet. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm really not, I'm not happy guy. And if you ask, if you ask my family, they'll tell you that. But, but once I get warmed up, you know, <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm good to go. And, and that warming up takes, um, um, I, I do yoga every morning. And uh, nature and animals, and of course, family and friends, you know, so the circle of influence again. But to get into character for Wolf Fat, I have to tell you, um, it was not difficult, <laughs> unfortunately, because, because I think for, for all of us, we all, you know, we all have uh, our public face. And then we have our insides and we all have different colors, right? Or different shades. And as an actor, you know, we're asked to touch into parts of our heart and our mind that we think about and feel and then show. And uh, unfortunately, I guess I have a lot of dark parts because I, when I was playing Wolfat, to me, from Wolfat's perspective, he was the hero. He was not the villain. He was the hero. And see, what I love about that idea is that in us as humans, we see it from our point of view. Well, so did Wolfat. It wasn't his fault about what his father did. It wasn't his fault that his mother was murdered. It was McGarrett's mother's fault. So shame on them. Wolf Fat was the hero. So that's how I chose to play it. And um, apparently the uh, producers and directors felt that I was, that was the right track because um, they didn't fire me. So, <laughs> so we're good. But yeah, so, that, so no, it was not difficult to, to jump into the skin for good or for bad. <laughs> well, okay, that's Sonny, another one. Yes, next question, actually. Um, you know that most successful people will always have some sort of routine or habits, right, to become successful as they are. So do you have an everyday morning ritual routine or evening ritual routine that helps you uh, go? Um, yes, I do, but <clears throat> they vary and they change a lot. Um, you know, again, because mom and dad were martial arts teachers and most of my friends were athletes or martial artists. Uh, I try to be physical every day. Actually, if I do not do something physical every day, I do not feel good. I don't feel good. So uh, 
I practice yoga, even if it's just five minutes, sometimes longer, uh, whether it's in class or actually by myself now that we've had you know, COVID. Uh, I do that almost every day. I love animals and I love hitting the hills and running up hills and um, nature. Uh, of course, I practice some martial arts on my own or with my friends and family, but I do that every day. And I think I go back, you know, really back to the, the basics. Now, there was a time when Duru and myself and, and you know, the, my, our German, uh, my German martial arts older brothers and Sifus where in mom's class, I kid you not, we were obliged to do a 20 minute horse stance, like <laughs> thighs <laughs> parallel to the ground, 90 degree. And yep. if you took mom's class, right? See if you're and you know, you took mom's class. And, and I say this because, you know, like again, dad would do like fighting techniques, but mom's like, you guys have no right to fight if you're not fit. So we had to go through mom to get to dad. It was rough. <laughs> Um, but she made us do a 20 minute horse stance. Now, um, that was probably the most fit I ever was, was, was training with mom and dad. And because of the pain it took, I hope to never be that fit again. But <laughs> it did teach me um, that we have, at least I had, and I'm thinking all of us as humans, we can always do a little more than we think. And um, I do practice the horse stance, you know, um, because one, it, it reminds me of happy times, golden times in, in, in Germany. It was so much fun training, hard, but, but great. But that stance forces you to get your breath down because holding a, a 90 degree horse stance is difficult. As you guys, as most of you know, it's difficult, especially for a long time. And it naturally forces your breath down. So I do a lot of horse dance or leg work. And I just recently started running uh, stairs again. Mom's a huge advocate of that. Um, so yes, I, I do have a routine and it varies. You know, I do a lot of body work, uh, uh, body weight work, handstands, back bend, trying to keep my splits, trying to keep the basics. Splits, handstand, back bend. If I can do those three things, I feel like at least physically, if it's an action movie, physically, I'm ready to go. If I don't have those three things, you know, uh, just psychologically, and I think physically also, um, I, I, something's not in check because you need flexibility, you need strength. Uh, you need your breath down, you know, not just for, for acting, but to actually, I feel, to lead a, a present life. It takes a lot of work to be present. Yeah. So Mark, um, I know we're getting out to the end and we got a lot, one more. Uh, where do you go from here? I mean- as uh, Well, as soon as we finish, I'm probably gonna go pee pee. <laughs> I mean, after that part. <laughs> okay, I, okay, I know, I know. We all have to do that. Actually, no. Well, Actually, this is the thing, Paul. This is the thing. I think, <clears throat> I think as long as as long as I'm here, as long as I'm physically here, I am going to, you know, take your and mom's advice and, and continue trying to learn and be the best I can as a martial artist, as an actor, and most importantly, as a human being, as a human being. And that means I continue with my acting classes. I continue you know, you can see my book back there. I read, oh, here's another thing I do every day. I read out loud every day. I learn new words. I try to study languages, you know. I try to keep my German up. I'm learning some, um, you know, I had some French back in, in, in school when I went to a school there. I'm trying to learn some Russian. I try to learn every single day uh, to read, to keep, to feed this mind, to, to eat good food so that, um, you know, one, I could, I could find you know, or improve whoever I am, because I seem to change, you know, things in my mind every day. And I think that's good, because it means I'm not closed off, I think. Um, and to progress. That's, that's where I like to, to progress. And I would like to, 
it's funny because I really see myself as you and mom. I, I want to be uh, an educator. Um, I'd like to uh, start teaching martial arts more. And I'd like to, you know, I'm working with my Shakespeare teacher and my, my, my you know, she's also my voice coach. And I think I'd like to incorporate something with martial arts and acting uh, because I think it all, it all it all sort of goes together. So I, I think in addition to the acting, to kind of go in the path of you and mom, uh, Hamburg is one of my favorite cities in the world. I mean, I've, I've been, I've had the good fortune of traveling a lot. You know, we did American Samurai. We shot that in, in Israel. In, um, I was based out of Tel Aviv, worked in, in Jerusalem, been through Asia, different places in Europe, Africa, and... Um, you know, uh, at heart, I'm still a doo-doo. So <laughs> maybe doo-doo and I will do something with you and with you and mom. Um, yeah, but main thing is to keep keep progressing and keep an open heart and open mind. Well, that's that's a given. Um, everybody's made up of two uh, two individuals anyway. You know, um, you. Let me just kind of explain that what I'm saying so that, you know, because Mark, people see, I see you as two people, you know, um, one, the character and one, the personality, you know, um, and for, for, you know, the character is actually who you are inside. Personality is when people look at you and they see that personality and your character shows a lot of good traits into it. You've got integrity, honor, loyalty, respect, humbleness and things this way. Your personality comes out really good too and strong. Some people can have, you know, um, um, a character that is, that is really weak, and then their personality, they, they fake it along the way. Yeah, but you're genuine, and that's that is what I love about you keeping your balance between your character and your personality. And some people don't understand what character is or personality. Then it's time that you pick up the dictionary and find out what it is. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, you know, Sonny, um, I know you got some last words to say on, on where we go from here. And I know that everybody's just kind of holding back. And I know that the minute we let go, this is going to click off so fast and everybody's going to run to the, to the, to the toilet. <laughs> okay. actually, so Sonny, go, go ahead, Sonny. Yeah. Well, actually, where, Sifu, what do we have going I now? Mean, there's a lot of questions that are coming up and I know you're a busy guy, but Speaking of your mom, I wanted to actually put her on because I believe she's got a question for you too. So I thought I'm gonna uh, pin her so that this way we can have her on. And then uh, Malia, if you can please uh, unmute yourself so that this way uh, I would like you to ask a question for Mark. So let me just, oh, you gotta unmute yourself again, sorry. I, I muted you, but there you go. Hi, Becky. Hi, Malia. You can Hi. say something. <laughs> Hi. Margot. Hey, Margot, I actually, Where, you can go? you? There you are. Yeah, okay. we can there hear you. Are. You can hear me? With yes. my loud voice, I'm sure you can hear me. Marco, I really have no question. Everything about you um, has always been perfect. Perfect father, perfect son, uh, perfect youngster. You are an example for everybody. Uh, I know you when you're down and out, you still project happiness. I know you when uh, you think you can't possibly do it, but you succeed. I, uh, I see you put your life out on the limb. Every day you go run those crazy trails. And it isn't that it's, I don't like the trails. It's that I don't like that you're the only one out there. Rattlesnake season, wild cats are running around there. And who's gonna save my son if one of them was to get you? I know you're a martial artist and all that, but still that's a mother's worry. But aside from all of that, Mark, I, I wanna know, will there ever come a day when you do a film that's a comedy because people know you as uh, the aggressive 
the bad guy in all of the movies that you make, but you are by far the funniest young man I have ever uh, come across. Your humor is one of a kind. I mean, we see Jackie Chan out there doing his thing, but your humor goes way beyond that. And do you ever audition for comedies or do you only audition for action? Uh, yeah, M mom, I would, I would love to do some, some, some comedy. Um, I, I try to infuse that in, in, in some of the characters, but you know, it feels like you know, uh, in Iron Chef, I get to play a little of hyper reality. Um, in John Wick, thankfully, Keanu and, and Chad let me play with Zero's character a little bit. But it seems like um, up until recently, it's, it's been very, very much, you know, I have my, my action career and then I'll do a drama, you know, in, um, you know, like a couple Hallmark movies I was fortunate enough to be in and then Iron Chef. So it's not all combined yet. Uh, I, I would love to to do a, a, a comedy if if something came up and it was you know if I was right for it. So so yes, I would like to, Mom. Uh, will I? I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. And thank you. Well, you know, Mark, you have to realize that um, there isn't anything you can't do, and you've proven that to yourself. Up to uh, what are you? Fifty-seven now. Fifty-seven. You had a birthday yesterday. Uh, you are probably the most amazing 57-year-old man. The condition uh, you keep yourself in, the training. You say, I trained you hard, but when I see how you train yourself, that goes up another scale because you push yourself oh, way out on the edge. And to think that you are 57, you have to stop and look. You were 57 and look what you do. You are in the most incredible shape. Mentally, there isn't anything that you think you couldn't possibly do because you do it. I just want you to know as a mother, I'm so extremely proud of you. You, um, you make me laugh, you make me mad, you make me cry, you make me do all the things that a son does. <laughs> uh, and I, <laughs> I love you um, with all my heart and I look forward to um, Seeing you soon. You. And I look forward, I look forward to interviewing you on my show. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. <laughs> let me uh, I love you. Okay. <laughs> let, let me make a comment on that, you know, because Mark, there's a lot of self-discipline that goes through there, yeah. And you know, there's you know, I always like to quote this near because it's an old Chinese saying. Um, that it says a turtle only goes forward by sticking and risking his neck out. You have risked a lot of things. You have stuck your neck out there, and like a turtle, you move, even if it's slowly. Uh, turtle but neck. Moving forward. Turtle yeah, neck. Well, there you go. There you go. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta be able to stick your neck out, to, you know, uh, uh, to go. And that is the one thing that you know I want to make sure that people that I leave people on this one here is just that if you want things, you know, you gotta risk. That means sticking your neck out. That means if you're a turtle that always like to think, oh, I'm, I'm sheltered. No, no, you got to stick it out there and say, you know what, I'm going forward and take that step forward. And as long, you know, as you keep on going, you're going to do it. They say that even water will crack a rock that it comes over time and just one drop at a time, one drop at a time. And, you know, and you'll hear me always saying this, the only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. And, <laughs> but you do it. You see, and, and that's the thing that you, you master something and you just keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. Oh, all right. Now we can go all day on this in here, but I know time is going so we need to get on to moving and things this way. Sonny, you're closing. Yes, Susan, I'm just uh, something unplugged. There we go. All right, well, again, Mark, thank you. Thank you very much for doing this for your dad and allowing me to be part of it as well. Really appreciate it. And I mean, it, it, very inspiring, very emotional. And I'm sure a lot of people have gotten some good gold nuggets is what we call it, those aha moments. Because I know uh, there are still a lot of questions going through the chat as well as on my phone, but I know this will give us a good excuse to have a part two. Hopefully having you again 
to answer these other questions that we have. Okay, so again, thank you very much. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So, um, yeah, you, you so guys, again, yeah. everybody, go ahead. everybody uh, just letting you know, uh, if you do have any other questions, you can either A, message me or see for a while. And so this way we'll write it all down and make sure we try to get it for our next show or either that we might just send it directly to Mark and we'll get him to answer it and then we'll send it back to you kind of thing. As well as, as you can see on my shirt, the coscosmartialart.com, uh, Sifu Al has re-released his One Hub Kindle video sets as well as his uh, DTS video set. So if you're interested, they are up for sale right now. They are still on sale, but also he's looking and doing the new program uh, of the DTS where we're going to have an ed, uh, continuing education program. So if you guys are interested, like I said, message us and we'll let you know what's going on because I'm pretty excited about this because right now Sifu Al is doing all this filming and, and getting it all set up and we're gonna get it down soon, which will be great for novice to intermediates to instructor level and higher because everybody can learn from everybody, right? So again, thank you. And I'll have Sifu well to uh, finish off. Hi, Jess and Olga. <laughs> yeah. and we had everybody. So many hey, friends man. out here. Sorry. We got a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. All the faces. Hi, Sorry, you guys. Hey. Hey, hey, you guys, one thing over here. If you guys really enjoyed what we're doing over here, I want you guys to give yourself a real clap. Everybody clap if you enjoyed it, okay? We got right. it. All right, fantastic. Yeah. We're going good on that. Now, yeah. here's, here's the thing that I want you guys to, uh, to, uh, to remember. There's a lot of things going on, and I see a lot of questions over here, and I hope to get uh, Malia and Mark together again. Maybe we can do a part two together, right? And, and then yes. get a little bit more involved because... There's so much things to talk about, so many golden nuggets to give out that it's almost impossible to do an interview when, they, when, when all of us has history and, and which can be all motivated, uh, give you inspiration and motivation. So, you know, if you guys really want to have it up that way where you see all of, all of us together, just let us know, give us a thumbs up and we give you a good old love. Now, I know that yep. you guys are going to be um, enjoying the rest of the day. Mark, I'm going to give you the last say. Oh, hold on, Mark, before you get the last say, okay? Again, letting everybody know that I'm recording all this and we will have it downloaded on the YouTube channel so you can rewatch and get all the uh, gold nuggets again. And once you get onto the DTS channel, what I want you to do is if you like it, like it. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button so that this way, when we put new videos on uh, like this, you'll get notified. So again, the more the merrier, let us know. So Mark, back to you. Okay. <laughs> I want to thank yeah, everybody. And if you don't mind, I want to go through every single name and I'll try to do it quick. Okay. By so, all means. Yes. Thank you to Sonny and Albert. <laughs> Albert, <laughs> Clyde, and Mustafa, Thomas, Malia, Mamasan, Sifu Eric, Lily, Sifu Ron, Chris, Sifu Dasos, who swept me. I will never forget that. That was so, no, seriously, when he swept me, I was in the air. It was like, this is so cool. He's so good. Bam, ow. But anyway, Sifu Yern, Petra, Arvid, Arvid, Florian. See for Mama Cliff. See for Hoda. See for Dieter. Dieter. Hello. <laughs> Bobby. Er oh, er oh, Eric just moved. Eric. Bobby Leck. Uh, Olga. Hello. Kagdela. Arasha. See for Christian. No. <laughs> Sunny. Claudia, and then next page, here we go. Sifu, si, that state, Sifu Bureau, that's that then. Sifu Michael, <laughs> Mac, Mac or Mac? Hello, 
Tausch! Du, du Tausch Sportcenter, wirklich? <lacht> Michael, Tito, Alex, David, muchas gracias, Benjamin, Luisa, Caesar, Sitten, Leila und Vanessa, hallo. <laughs> What were you eating? Strawberries. Okay, strawberries, good. <laughs> Dwayne, how's it going, man? Thank you. Oliver, Christian, Stefan, Howard, Seton, Seton, Seton. Hey, you cheater, Seton, you have two pages, man. You <laughs> naughty. <laughs> Dennis, <laughs> Mike, Matthias, KSDS, Israel Gonzalez. Israel, hello. Becky, we'll chat later. <laughs> Donnie, Michael. Seton is there again. <laughs> You're good, man. I don't know how you do that. And let's see. Uh, Howard Heller, hello. Dennis Guila, Matthias, haben wir schon noch nicht. Matthias, hello again. Uh, let's see. It says iPhone. Good looking dude with a red cap, but it says iPhone. I don't Roland. know his name, but hello. Roland. Roland. Hey, Roland. Roland. <laughs> Bruce. Enzo. Ron. Hello, Jess. Wie geht's dir? <laughs> Professor David. Andrew. Svenja. Kakdjela. <laughs> Robert. Luke. Hey, Luke. I think that's it. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Um, it was really fun. And I hope to see you someday in person without masks. Much aloha to you all. I know Mark. Visit us in, in Hamburg. Anything, everybody yes. can unmute yourself and say hello to Mark and see if well. If you guys hello. can unmute yourself, we can all just say one quick hello and hello. again. Hi, Clyde. Eric Lee's song that's still possible. Let's all go together. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy <laughs> 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 Yeah. Okay, you gotta unmute yourself, Mark and uh -oh. Sifu. <laughs> I gotta okay. mute. I can't go in my video. Go in my video. Ah. Sifu, you're muted again. Mark, you're muted. Can you guys unmute yourself? I had to mute everybody else because. <laughs> Can you open my video, please, Sonny? Thank you, bro. The dude was singing too loud. It's Mustafa. <laughs> all right, guys. I think, okay, it's time, guys. We could go on all day. So everybody, um, Mark, thank you very much. I love you. You know, you're always mine. My number one. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Pop. And, thank uh, you, Sonny. Hello, right. everybody. Thank you. Zoom Geburtstag. Vielen Dank. Dankeschön. Alles Sie für das aus. Alles gut zum Geburtstag. All right, guys. See you, Clyde. Bye -bye. I see you, Clyde. Bye bye. Take care. Leave Bye -bye. you guys. Bye bye. Bye, Mom. Tschüss, 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 tschüss. Tschüss.